I'm not sure what it is, but there's something slightly off about that building right there. Ladies and gentlemen, we give you Ripley's Believe It or Not, Orlando. Kind of set up like Wonderworks, where Wonderworks is upside down, but Ripley's Believe It or Not, it's just something off about it. It's just, sunken. It is sunken. It's like tilted into, I don't know exactly what. Olivia. A couple of months ago, we were in St. Augustine, Florida, and we visited the Ripley's up there. It was a good experience. Slightly uh, under exciting, but it was still good. And we've been talking with Ripley's quite a bit over the months since then. And we formed a bit of a, a friendship. Grim Life Collective and Ripley's, believe it or not, we've done a few different giveaways. And because of them, we're here in Orlando, where we call home, to visit, finally, the Ripley's, believe it or not, here. So let's go inside and see what kind of oddities they have. The Ripley's Believe It or Not here in Orlando is open quite late from 9 a.m. to 1 a.m. with the last entry being midnight. How proper. It's a little hard to see because of how dark it is, but that walnut desk right there, Robert Ripley produced a series of drawings for his newspaper column every day without fail for over 30 years. That's the actual desk. So please come in, have a look around, and then ask yourself if you believe it or not. Not entirely sure what's going on here, but they have, it's almost like a, what do they call it, a Snapchat filter? Yeah. Where it just puts this thing over top of your face. I'm gonna blink, I'm gonna shake my head. What is going on? Jessica, you have a mighty big nose. Yes, you. Oh my God, this is cool. If, can you imagine if we had this in our house? All day long, we would sit here and make faces at each other. There's a little exhibit here asking if you can roll your tongue. We've seen a wax figure of that guy at the one in St. Augustine, but this one here, it tells you a little how to do it, because some people can, and there's a mirror. Let's see if we can do it. Can you roll your tongue, Jessica? I can do everything but that one. Try as we may, uh, we're not very good at that. That, my friends, is a human skin mask. And oddly enough, that right there is an actual shrunken head. An ancestor head. As soon as you walk in, you're greeted with all kinds of weird brain teasers and weird things to look at and try to figure it out. Because, uh, what does it say? Shake your head. It's a lot easier to see it whenever you look at it through the screen. Oh man, I love these things. Basically, you stare at the center of this screen for 30 seconds and then look at one of the pictures around it and it should move. So, let's give it a go. We're counting down. There's the countdown. Just stare at the numbers. And it's trippy. All right, here we go. We're gonna go look at a tornado. Oh, that is just <laughs> kooky. Oh, we're not in Kansas anymore. Turn the corner, there's a framed picture of Elvis here. And if you read the plaque, it tells you that right there on that business card is an actual lock of Elvis's hair. Now this is probably one of my favorite things here in Orlando as of right now. And no, I'm not talking about the autographed picture of Michael Jackson, but what's below it. Right in the center of your screen is a cockroach. I repeat, a cockroach painted to look like Michael Jackson from Thriller. Okay. That is bad booty. That's creepy. This is what happens when somebody has too much time on their hands. This, my friends, is a telephone book carved out to look like Jimi Hendrix. 
I absolutely love these tilted rooms. And Jessica, she kind of gets a little dizzy in these, but here's a tilted room right here, and it has a couple different things that you can do, like a pull table. But over here, this is kind of neat. Go ahead over there and show what's going on, Jessica. Basically, that obviously is up uh, uphill. Put the ball down there, and it rolls. I think it's up. magnetized, but then when the ball gets to the end, it drops back down here, no problem. Dun dun. I think I figured it out. Think you figured it out? What's going on? I think it's magnetized because the ball rolls uphill. No problem, right? But when it gets at the end, it falls down back into here, no problem. It does make sense in a place that doesn't make sense. Now to give you an idea of how off this room feels, right now I'm standing pretty level. Go ahead, Jessica, roll a ball. And as you can see, it goes uphill. Well, at least it looks like it's going uphill. Roll another one a little harder. Tilted down that way. It doesn't seem like it, but it's off. Something about this place is awry. Here's another angle of how things are a little awkward here. Jessica right now is walking downhill while it's uphill. This is from a crazy. That's just crazy. It looks like it hurts. The displays that they have here are pretty amazing. Here is a West African mask collection of Robert Ripley, but right down here at the bottom, you can't reach out and touch it, is an actual homemade coffin. Look how beautiful that thing is. Crazy, right? And there's an actual photo of Robert Ripley with New Guinea Headhunters, 1932. Check that out. A cannibal trophy skull. Extremely rare and extremely cool. Here's an actual human skull taken as a war trophy and it's decorated with shells. And as the head turns, here's a genuine shrunken head. Look at that thing. That's crazy. This display is pretty freaking awesome. It's set up like it's a warehouse. Like you would imagine Ripley's warehouse would be. Just filled with all kinds of things on display. Oh my gosh, do you guys recognize that? That is the cookie cutter prop from the movie, Edward Scissorhands. That is cool. It's the actual robotic mixer that was used in the film. And a side note, it was Vincent Price's last movie. There's a Jade General. There's an at ad here made of discarded computer parts. And I like that he has antlers. Now what's interesting about that top shelf up there, there's an actual skull and a spirit house. You know the old tale of the chicken with its head chopped off? This is where it all started. Well, according to legend and lore, they even have a fur-covered trout. That thing is massive. That thing is absolutely terrifying. It says it's a German Wolpertinger. I'm not entirely sure what that thing is, but it means a curious flying creature that lives in the woods, lakes, or mountains. That's terrifying. If you look closely in the center of your screen, you're gonna see what appears to be a robot rabbit, or a rocket rabbit. I'm not entirely sure. But over here, we got a six-toed pig, a two-headed calf. Right next to him is a Siamese lamb, cow hairballs, and a long-tailed rooster. This place is crazy. What about a Mercedes carved out of wood? And this guy right here is massive. It is a gorilla made out of tires. I don't know if there's gonna be any monsters, death, or torture devices, but we're about to walk into a dungeon. Oh, it's a bat with art on it. That's kind of cool. A hand-painted bat. It's got a Mona Lisa on it and some other things. Oh, and check it out. Oops, <laughs> I'm hitting the window. An English witch's mirror. That's cool. Can you see yourself? All I see is blackness like my soul. And right down here, there's a medieval mask called a medieval shame brank. Shame, shame, shame. 
and a spiked collar. It's, kind of, it's not something you want to put on your dog. What did you find over here, Jessica? More torture masks. Oh man. Do you remember the torture mask that we saw in St. Augustine? Yeah. This one's called a German head crusher. Oh my lord. I love that they call them shame masks. This is weird. There's an Iron Maiden display here. Look at this thing. Can you imagine climbing inside that and having it shut on you? Crazy. I want one. Jessica, look at this thing. It's called a devil bust. Why can't we have that in our house? How about a body snatcher's coffin gun? Oh my gosh. That's a tongue twister for you. Say it again. Body snatcher's coffin gun to try to uh, thwart grave robbers in the early 1800s. Oh man, we need that. This place is awesome. A Tibetan skull cup. It looks like a medieval butter dish. Behind glass, and a good thing too is a vampire killing kit. 1850. But what if actual vampires were here? We'd have to break the glass, which is going to cause more blood, which is going to attract more vampires. Oh well. A medieval torture area would not be complete without a wall of weapons. And look at this one over here. Look at the name of it. Flesh Saw. Oh yeah. Yep. Flesh Saw. Don't leave home without one. Looks like we just stumbled on some bones, fossils, and a Komodo dragon. Jessica, why don't you give him a kiss? I can't, he's behind the barrier. All right, let's see how much of a contortionist you are, Jessica. Can you get inside the box? That's a duck down. You can do it, you can do it. Now you have to, you gotta lower yourself down. All right, that one's no problem. Now get out and do the other one. There you go. Hi, my name is Tyler Fire, and I'm a sword swallower with Ripley's. Down a little lower. Uh oh, this one's gonna be a little harder. You got this. Oh, there you go, perfect. And I'm telling you right now, that is not gonna happen for me. Mainly because right now I have a bit of a shoulder injury. And if I get in there, I can't guarantee I'm gonna be able to get right back out. Now, I did not know this, but it seems that Florida is the lightning capital of the world. You know what? It does make sense. Hey, sure. That's looking a little creepy. Kind of like something you would see out of the movie Beetlejuice. The hands are holding miniature art pieces. But I'd say that that looks really cool. This sculpture right here is made out of paper. The entire thing, it's like a tissue paper. It's called Tracking Geronimo. I mean, look at the horse. Look at all the detail. This thing is pretty amazing. It is Captain Jack Sparrow made out of parts of the ocean found here in Florida. From shells to debris to you name it. If it was on the beach, it's here. And check this out. Look at the shell that is half man. Do you remember all those giant chairs that you would see at carnivals and fairs? That's what that reminds me like. You were looking rather small sitting in that. Do you feel small? But the rest of his brothers and sisters were normal. A little tiny, tiny girl and your tiny, tiny little feet. Size 7 shoe? This is still tiny feet. Jessica, do you see it? There's a box that says, do not open this box. Go ahead, open it. It's like straight out of Psycho. That is a mighty huge tire, Jessica. Can you imagine rolling down a hill in that thing? It is massive. Can you actually climb inside it? Let's see. You can do it. Ripley's, believe it or not, Orlando, Florida. Jessica has just left the building. Wait, where'd you go? There you are. Here is the tallest man in the world, Robert Wadlow, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. He reached nine feet by the time he died. Michael is six foot two. Let me back up so you can see 
their full stature, both of them. So Michael is six foot two. Tallest man was nine feet. Michael looks so small. Let's see how tall Jessica is. So is it like you're almost you're like five four? Five four. Five four. Yep. There you go. Five four. And he's nine feet. It's insane. We just walked into a hallway that has a bunch of waxed figures. There's selfie guy, which is pretty much how the world is today. But check this out. I can do that with my eyes. If you ever see me in person, ask me, and I might do it. But there's more over here. Look at her and her neck. Crazy cool. Hello. And this guy, JT Sailors. We saw a wax figure of him as the, at the Ripley's, believe it or not, in St. Augustine, Florida. Let's frame that, that's almost like perfect. Check that out, Ripley's, believe it or not. The Grinning Man. Over here, kind of like what I do with my ears, this gentleman here, I'm sorry, woman here, is doing with her lips. Oh wait, no wait, she goes with the guy who's taking the picture. He's not taking a selfie, he's taking a picture of her. Now the Lizard Man has been around for quite a while. Everybody knows the Lizard Man, but this is the first time I'm hearing of the Vampire Woman, the Mexican Vampire Woman. She is looking pretty bad booty. Check out her skull. Crazy. Like, I love body art, but I can't imagine doing something like this. You said she's a lawyer? Yeah, it says that she's a lawyer. What kind of lawyer? We need her to represent us. It doesn't say. Just look at that picture of her holding up a skull. Crazy cool. That's awesome. Look at you. My friend. We're all one grim family. We just got out of Ripley's, believe it or not, here in Orlando, Florida. And you know what? It was actually pretty good. This was our second time at a Ripley's together. The first one was St. Augustine. This one here in our hometown, our new hometown, it's actually pretty good. A little sad that it was only one floor. It felt rather short, but it was full of some amazing stuff. It was good, yeah. It did feel a little small. I think mostly because the outside of the building looks really, really big, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's very maze-ish, and it's filled with a bunch of stuff. So I wasn't bored at all. I had a really good flow, and I enjoyed myself quite a bit. It was laid out pretty good. I was actually quite happy that they didn't have many coin, like buy here, or do you know, pay to do this kind of things throughout the entire thing like yeah. St. Augustine did. It actually felt like you got your money's worth for being there. Yeah, I didn't feel like I was um, looking for something to do. Did you have a favorite part? Mm -hmm. Favorite exhibit, a favorite piece? I don't know, I kind of just felt like a goofball through the whole thing. I love the little section of the like medieval torture area because there was a dark and spooky hallway, which so that was kind of cool. My favorite part was at the very, very beginning when it showed Ripley's actual desk. And you know what? <laughs> that was actually really, really cool. I loved how they had it all set up. That was cool. I didn't know that he did that for 30 years. Right? Every day for 30 years. And he said, that set the tone for the entire museum. Did, yeah, kind of did, yeah. Did you learn anything new? Only what you told me. <laughs> <laughs> Which was? That Florida is the number one lightning strike in the country? You could say that. You can also say Florida is the lightning capital of the world. Okay, yeah, that makes more sense. Is it the world or is it the country? It's probably the country. I don't know. I thought like the plains would be a lot more with lightning because you know there's so many storm chasers. But, but we're surrounded on three sides of by water. So maybe that has something to do with it. Who knows? Science. 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 Ripley, believe it or not, science. 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 Wherever I come, I've had luck It's coming my way Wherever I go, hard luck Is that it stays Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always coming my way